Welcome back to DTech. Today we're going to be doing another uh, clone video. This time it's going to be on the BMW MS V90 type of DME. But there's a little bit of a backstory with this. Um, this here was one I already cloned previously, and I did it with the OBD Star. And at that time, when I sent it out, I did not know that there was going to be an issue with it. And then the mobile program, my friend, um, contacted me, told me there was a couple different codes in this one. And so I'll get you a shot of that. And it ended up basically getting bricked after trying to get programmed. So at that time, we just kept the original one on the vehicle to get that up and going and running. And what they were really concerned with was the alternator was not charging properly. And so they were wanting to do a separate used computer. Um, but ultimately, at that time, the alternator that they put on, which was aftermarket, was the cause of it not charging properly. So they kept the original DME and got a factory alternator. Now it's been probably maybe three months, two, three months, and they're complaining that intermittently they're getting a charge issue again, so they wanna try another DME again. So what we've got here is a second donor, because again, this one uh, got cloned incorrectly, and when it, we tried to program it, it ended up breaking. Now this one doesn't respond at all. Uh, can't even pull data off of it. It wouldn't communicate when it was in the car. Uh, this one's completely shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and clone this. Um, it's MSV90. Gonna use uh, the launch, which is the one that's been working properly. And then we're actually gonna use the PC version um, since I just got the adapter. And we'll try that PC version out on this one. And so quickly also, just to, before going forward, I just wanted to get a shot of the same file and where I pulled up the VIN number. There we go. And we can compare that to the picture that was sent to me from the scan tool when attempting to program. So this is the original good file that I ended up uh, pulling with the launch tablet. So since I have that saved, then I'm gonna use that file to put into the second donor. Now before we get started, I'm gonna pull up the uh, EEPROM data that I have here and show you uh, some of the issues that I ran into. So if you look, this one's listed here as uh, MSV90 uh, original, and I have it written as a redo. So this was, EEPROM data that I pulled with the launch tablet at the time, and this is what got me the correct data, unlike the OBD star. But um, let's take a look here. I'll show you the comparison. And so right away, we have a difference in data that we are getting between this one on the right, which was the OBD star EEPROM read, this one on the left was the launch read for the EEPROM. Now the reason why I decided to do this was because I'll put a picture up here. Once I sent the cloned DME back to my friend who was out in the field, installed it, it started the vehicle but it had trouble codes in it. And at the time I wasn't sure why it would have that. Um, so I actually told him, asked him if he could try to reprogram it and see if we can get rid of that code. Once we did that, the programming basically just froze. It wouldn't continue and it ended up basically bricking the module. So because of that, I ended up pulling both files and checking them and comparing them. And this is what I found. And so you can tell again, those four uh, bytes right there are different. There's another one that's different. 
there as well there these are more differences and so there are various differences between the two EEPROM files as we continue to find them all right so let's look for MSV 90 and there we go so we double click and now let's look at the connection diagram and it opens up a second page and so we'll make our connections based off of that all right connections are made pretty straightforward nothing crazy there Let's go ahead and continue then. So we'll back out of here. And just before continuing, if you notice, this one, other than reading information, actually lets us do ISN work. So we can read it and then write it if we want to just skip over everything and change the ISN. But for this, let's go ahead and start by hitting connect. and we've got data so along with that let's to secure our connection let's go ahead and read the chip ID and there we go right there on the bottom left so despite the fact that this one is another donor I'm still gonna read and back up this data just for whatever reason All right, I'll save this. And now that that's saved, we'll go ahead, I'll read the flash and then continue on. All right, both of those uh, files are read and saved. Now, we'll go ahead and this is a good thing about when programmers let you read the ISN. So we'll pull the ISN of this DME, which will let us see and, and we can write it down, take a picture of this actual DME's ISN. And then from there, we can verify if that changes after we do the clone. Um, it's just an added level of verification when doing this type of work. So it's still at 0% there in the bottom. We'll see what uh, what it does when trying to read it. So just getting familiar this is the second DME that I am doing with this program PC version so um, pretty interesting that uh, some of them do let you do ISN reads here on PC compared to the tablet where I still haven't seen that on the tablet yet alright guys so to be fully transparent um, I'm just gonna let you guys know that it stayed at zero when trying to read the ISN um, and it didn't go anywhere and it wouldn't let me disconnect it wouldn't let me close the program it just stayed locked now I could back out of it if I needed to meaning open up web page or other things that were open but it just it locks me out so I had to restart the computer, but I powered down the power supply to the DME, hoping to avoid any issues, and then restarted, opened up, made connection, read the chip ID, and then hit read ISN again, and it's still doing the same thing. So, looks like that's the first um, flaw that I've encountered so far with this PC program. Again, I was surprised that it listed reading the ISN. Sometimes, most of the time, I haven't seen too many that can just read the ISN. Looks like it's got an issue doing so. 
So I'm gonna have to restart the, the whole computer again to get out of this kind of locked mode. And then we'll go over to reading the, uh, not reading, um, we'll just go ahead and finish writing the original um, EEPROM and Flash that I've got. All right, so that took a little bit longer expected, but uh, everything looks to be done correctly. Now, let's go ahead and do the flash. All right, looks like it's written the flash as well. Now for... Um, Again, I like to do some verification. I'm going to read both of these files that were written and then compare them with original files. I want them to match. All right, so we're done with that. Let's go ahead and disconnect. And all right, that's good. Let's, let's close this right here. All right, so we're still in the program. Now, I think... So just like the tablet, it has a way to verify two pieces, of, two files, and compare the two. So I think it's under here. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Uh, file check. Well, this is not what I was expecting. So I'm curious what this is, even before. Um, so it looks. If it's not going to do what I think it is, I'm going to have to maybe use the uh, X editor. All right, so I'm actually not going to continue right now with this. Uh, it does look like a cool feature, though. But I don't think it, it's going to give me what I'm looking for. So let's not go there. Let's use this guy here. Go ahead and compare. All right, EEPROM is the same. That's the one that was having issues with in the first place. So the here's the original one with that I gathered with the launch tablet a few weeks ago. And then this is one we just wrote and read and saved and it matches. So that's a good thing there. I'm going to verify the flash, but I never did have an issue with the flash to begin with. Um, the OBD star does or did transfer the flash the same, just not the EEPROM. So, so we got a difference here. And that's it. A uh, very small difference, uh, it's odd, but I'm not too concerned. The flash can always be um, reprogrammed. EEPROM hardcore information is what I was more worried about. I've shown in the past that some of this uh, can have very small differences in the files and still work properly.